This is BBC News. Just want to take you straight to Washington now, where the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is speaking. He's joined by the Swedish Prime Minister, Ulf uh, Christensen, who's there to actually ceremonially receive the ratification documents uh, for uh, Sweden's membership of NATO. Um, I think we can hopefully listen in to what uh, Antony Blinken has to say. Um, when they were challenged, we were there to defend them. Sweden was there to defend them. And I think what this tells us even more profoundly is the reaffirmation of Sweden's democratic character. Change driven by its people, by its citizens. There's also no clearer example than today of the strategic debacle that Putin's invasion of Ukraine has become for Russia. We see a Russia that is now weaker militarily, economically, diplomatically. Its standing in Ukraine has changed dramatically, whereas before 2014, the first invasion, people were open to positive relations with Russia, now virtually the entire society, and not just today, probably for generations, is turned against Russia because of its aggression. And fundamentally, our alliance is now, as I said, both larger and stronger than it's ever been. And we see again and again and again that everything Putin sought to prevent, he's actually precipitated by his actions, by his aggression. And there's no clearer example of that than Sweden becoming a member of this alliance. But even once that decision was made, um, none of this was, it was easy, none of this was obvious. It's taken two years, uh, nearly two years, of tireless diplomacy. Uh, together with the extraordinary Secretary General of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, to achieve ratification by every NATO member. Um, and again, the determination of Sweden's leadership, the extraordinary diplomacy that it's exerted, um, making sure that every question was answered, every challenge was met, every obstacle was overcome, that's what brought us to today. Now, some doubted that we get here. We never did, and we are here. This, of course, is also built on an extraordinary foundation of partnership between Sweden and NATO that goes back many, many years. Uh, Sweden's long been an active partner with NATO allies, training together, exercising together, working together. And fundamentally, the reason this is such a, a strong, powerful fit is because Sweden embodies and promotes the core values that are at the heart of NATO. Democracy, liberty, the rule of law. And it also brings some unique capabilities to this enterprise. Unique capabilities in the Arctic, the Baltic Seas. And this year, of course, Sweden will contribute more than 2% of its GDP to defense uh, and continue to show the way for all NATO members. If you go back to 1949, at the signing of the, the NATO Treaty, President Truman said this, and I quote, in taking steps to prevent aggression against our own peoples, we have no purpose of aggression against other peoples. We hope to create a shield against aggression and the fear of aggression, a bulwark which will permit us to get on with the real business of government society, the business of achieving a fuller and happier life for all of our citizens. That is fundamentally what this enterprise Uh, well, as you saw, that was a, a somewhat of a swift end to uh, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, who was uh, speaking in Washington, D.C., uh, joined by uh, the Swedish Prime Minister, Ulf Christensen. Uh, of course, Sweden becoming the 32nd member of NATO as a result of uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I think it's back now. Let's uh, dip back in. With that, Mr. Prime Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary, Anthony, thank you so much. Today is a truly historic day. Sweden is now member of NATO. We are deeply grateful for the overwhelming bipartisan congressional support for Sweden's accession and for the strong leadership from the US administration leading the way 
on ratification and security assurances. I would personally like to thank both President Biden and you, Secretary Blinken, for your invaluable efforts and personal commitments during the accession process. I would also like to thank all NATO allies who have supported our accession and welcoming Sweden as a 32nd member of the alliance. We are humble, but we are also proud. We will live up to high expectations from all NATO allies. United we stand. Unity and solidarity will be Sweden's guiding light as a NATO member. We will share burdens responsibilities and risks with other allies. Today is, as Secretary Blinken said, it's a victory for freedom today. Sweden has made a free, democratic, sovereign and united choice to join NATO. There is an overwhelming support in our parliament and among our people. That is a strength, both for Sweden and for the alliance. And as a strong democracy, Sweden will stand for the values in the Washington Treaty, signed just a few blocks from here 75 years ago. Freedom, democracy, individual liberty, and the rule of law. Sweden is, as was mentioned, now leaving 200 years of neutrality and military non-alignment behind. It is a major step, but at the same time, a very natural step. Membership means that we are coming home to the Alliance for Peace and coming home to the Alliance for Freedom, to which many democracies already belong. Also home to our neighbors' security cooperation. Home to the circle of countries where we, for generations, have belonged. We will defend freedom together with the countries closest to us, both in terms of geography, culture, and values. The security situation in our region has not been this serious since the Second World War. Russia will stay a serious threat to the Euro-Atlantic security for the foreseeable future. It was in this light that Sweden applied to join the NATO Defense Alliance, to gain security, but also to provide security. We have unique capabilities to contribute on land, in the air, at sea. Our support to Ukraine is a fundamental part of that. Ukraine is fighting bravely for its freedom, but they are also defending European freedom. At the same time, we are strengthening our defense and doubling the defense budget right now. From this year onwards, Sweden meets the NATO standard of 2% of GDP to defense spendings. This is important for NATO security, obviously, and to burden sharing. We are increasing the numbers of conscripts, strengthening civil defense, and reintroducing civilian service in Sweden. We have been prepared for this task for quite a while. And I'm very pleased to take this very final step. Sweden is joining NATO is not the end of something. It's the beginning of something new. I look forward to making the world safer and freer together with the United States and all other NATO allies. And allow me, finally, a very short summary in Swedish. En väldigt kort sammanfattning på svenska. Det är en i sanning historisk dag idag. Sverige är från och med nu medlem i NATO. Jag vill personligen tacka både president Joe Biden och utrikesminister Blinken för ovärderliga insatser och deras personliga engagemang under hela den här anslutningsprocessen. Sverige lämnar nu 200 år av neutralitet. That's uh, the Swedish Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson uh, in Washington DC. Uh, you are hearing live there from uh, from him and from the uh, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken as well as Sweden became the 32nd member of NATO uh, of course brought on by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Around the world and across the UK this is BBC News.